Mark Spencer from Ripple Training here with a quick tip on how to use the RT Blend effect, which is part of the Ripple Tools collection for Final Cut Pro 10. Here I am in Final Cut Pro 10. I'm in the Titles browser in the Ripple Tools collection, and here is the RT Blend effect. What I'll do is press the X key to mark a range for this clip, select RT Blend and hit Q so that it matches the range of the clip. This is a fairly straightforward effect. I'll select it so that we can see its parameters in the title inspector. First, there's some quick tips you can turn on that will explain how to use it. I'll turn those off. Basic idea is you choose a blend mode and we're blending the image back with itself. And overlay is the default because overlay often creates a very pleasing effect. If you wanna see what the image looks like without any blend mode applied, you can just drag the intensity slider down to zero. So there's the original image. And there it is with the overlay effect, which basically increases contrast. If we click the pop-up menu, all of blend modes available in Final Cut Pro 10 are available right here. The basic idea is that these collection here, this first set of five will make an image darker. This next set of five will make it lighter. This next set, this third set will make it have higher contrast. So darks will be darker and bright areas will be brighter. And then there's some ones that really don't apply for generally what you're gonna use these for here. So I would stick with these top three sets. And frequently, uh, the nicest ones to use can be right in this category here, overlay, soft light, hard light. Uh, but if you have an image that is too washed out, just does not have enough density, then I would suggest trying something like multiply. And if you have an image that is just too uh, dark that you need to brighten, you could try add or screen that would lighten it up. So I'll do an add on this. You can see it's quite bright because this image actually has pretty good contrast. If I choose multiply, it'll be quite dark. But an image that is not dark enough, you could use multiply on. And once you apply one of these blend modes, you can modulate its impact with this same intensity slider here. So you might not want it to be quite that much impact. So you can choose exactly what impact it has. I'm gonna go back to overlay for this particular image. So I like how it looks here. Then the other thing I'm gonna do is use the soften slider. What soften does is basically add some blur into the image. So if I crank that up, you can see it kind of has this nice glow about it. And in fact, the slider only goes to 64, but if you drag directly on the value field, you can go quite a bit higher and create a really soft glow effect. I'm gonna go quite a bit higher there. So that's basically the, the effect and how it works. It's very simple, but it has some additional controls that allow you to limit the impact of the effect to a specific area of, the, uh, of your clip and to animate that area if you'd like. So you do that with this add mass checkbox. So I'll check it and you can see right away we get a rectangle and the uh, the blend mode and the soften is only affecting inside the rectangle. And we have a little on-screen control that lets you move uh, this area. Now, in this case, I would just like to apply it to the talent's face. So um, I can do a few things. I can invert the mask, which isn't useful here, but it can be useful sometimes. Uh, the mask position I can change by dragging the on-screen control or using these uh, inspector controls. What's nice about those is you can keyframe them. We'll come back to that. So the mass scale, you know, is a little too big. So I'm gonna bring it down. And I also would like to make it rounder to uh, kind of match your face. And here, the slider only goes to 50, which isn't very round, but you can crank up much higher by dragging on the value field. So I'll make it nice and round. And also pop open the scale so that I can manipulate X and Y separately. Cause I kind of want it to look maybe a little bit more, something that's gonna kind of match your face. And then I'm gonna use the mass rotation to kind of flip it over and move it up over her face. And just try to size it roughly to match uh, her face there. And then I'm gonna use the feather to kind of spread it out a little bit more. So something like that. The mask fall off allows you to adjust how quickly that feathering kind of disappears. Again, with feather, you can drag in the value field to go higher. So always know that with many of these tools, the sliders are limited, but you can drag directly on the value field. So if I wanna see how that uh, looks, I can drag the density slider down to zero to see the impact, or I can just tap the V key, which will disable the selected clip. And you can see the difference between the two. So in this case, I can kind of maybe give a nice highlight on her face. I think I'd really want to crank the feather up since it's affecting her hand there as well. And then if I did want to animate it, um, because she's moving around a little bit here in the shot, 
what I could do is set keyframes. So for mask position, uh, perhaps in scale also, I'll set keyframes. Then I can move forward in time and move this over as she moves and move it back, say, as she moves over there. And then that mask will move to follow her um, as she moves. So that's pretty much the whole thing. You can choose a blend mode, you can choose its intensity, you can soften it up with some blur, and then you can have it affect just part of the screen by using a mask that then you can animate to move with, uh, with the shot. Thank you for watching.